I come about halfway towards and more light, holiness flows into me. And, and as I got right up towards Jesus, I'm trying to see his unveiled face. But I don't know that no man looks upon the face of God and lives. But I am so happy that I am weeping. Mm. I know you're going to be so happy, but still Just cry. overcome. And I watched Jesus beginning to move. Oh, why is he doing that? Why won't he permit me to see his face? As the Lord moves with his hand, he steps aside and shows me a continuation of the circular tunnel. Right behind him, I can see a whole new world opening up behind him. It's as though he's been a door of light. He's in the doorway. And as he's opening this doorway into eternity, I can see fields, grass with the same radiance and glory that's upon him right across the pasture. The flowers, the crystal clear river, trees along both sides, mountains, blue sky, rolling hills. Now, I come from New Zealand, like Lord of the Rings country, and That's I am beautiful. looking at paradise. I'm thinking if you stepped on it, it would spring back. The radiance of the presence that was upon Jesus was across the entire creation. And I thought, I'm home. I, I, I couldn't believe it. I, I was under the assumption that religion taught you go into a cloud, <laughs> play harps and have no. fat little Italian babies no. for it. The newer. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I am looking at a new Lord, earth, yeah. and above it appears to be a new heaven, a parallel universe, really, right in front of me. As I'm standing there, I knew I'm home. I just begin to step forward, and Jesus came right back in front. The door closed as he said, now, yeah, now that you've seen, do you wish to remain here, or do you wish to return? I said, remain here. Mm. I have no desire to go back. No. I said, there I've known to go back for. No one loves me. Um, you love me. And I look back to say goodbye, cruel world, and the Lord showed me my mother. Mm. The one person who had taught who, me and who prayed loved and loved me, the one person I loved and honored. I thought, if I pass through into eternity now, will she know that I prayed in that ambulance? Will she have any concept that her prayers Where helped her son to give his heart to the Lord in his dying seconds? Will she have any way she would know this? I thought, she will not. Mm. I thought, how selfish would it be for me to enter eternity, my mother have to bury me, and think for all intents and purposes, she lost her son to hell. I thought it would break her heart. Mm. I said, I have to go back. I said, Lord, I want to go back. He said, Ian, if you return, you must see things in a new light from an eternal heavenly perspective, not a temporary earthly one. I look back again. My father, my brother, my sister, hundreds of thousands of people appeared behind them, a sea of humanity. I said, well, who were they? He said, and I want you to go back and tell them also, because most will not come into a church any longer mm. to hear my name. I said, but God, I don't love them. I don't know these people. I know my family. I love my mother. He said, Ian, I love them. I desire all of them to come to know me. Now, I had difficulty loving one person, let alone humanity. I said, I don't understand that love. How can I go back down a tunnel into darkness and back into my body? He said, son, tilt your head. Feel that it could drain from your eye. Now open your eye, Ian, and see. As I opened my eye, I was instantly back in my body, lying on a slab in a morgue, with an Indian doctor holding my right foot, cupped in his left hand with a scalpel, pricking the base of my foot like a dead piece of meat. And as he saw me open my eye, the poor doctor went through the ceiling. Mm. I heard the Lord speak to me. He said, son, I have just given your life back. I said, God, if that's true, can I look out my other eye? As I turned my head to the left in the doorway where nurses had worked on me in the A&E, they saw me tear her and hit them, and they smashed into each other as they ran. The doctor drops my foot and tells me I've been there for 15 to 20 minutes. I can feel nothing from my neck mm. down. I said, God, if I've seen you, can you please heal me and enable me to walk out of the hospital and live a normal life? The power was like electricity coming from the tip of my head. Death had come in through my feet. Now life was coming in. And within three or four hours, I was totally healed and walked out of the hospital. That day? That, the next day. I the stayed. next day you walked out? Yeah, walked out. And I believe in the resurrection power and the healing power. And I said, God, what's happened to me? He said, you are a reborn Christian. He said, read a Bible. I said, I don't know what a reborn Christian is. Do you have to die and come back to life or something? He said, no, read a Bible, son. I said, I don't have one. He said, your dad has. In six weeks, in 1982, I read the entire Bible. Wow. So.
What an incredible experience. Now, if, you, if you have biblical doubts about what Ian just said, I was reading this morning where uh, God appeared as a, as a pillar of cloud, and then he called Miriam and Aaron and Moses to him. He was mad at the time with what Miriam was doing, but it says he appeared as a pillar of cloud in front of the tabernacle, and then that he stood in that pillar. And that's exactly what Ian just described, that there was a presence, um, a, a human form presence, who was able to speak and interact with people at the door of the tabernacle. So if, uh, I, I love it when people get revelation, but I also love it when that revelation lines up with what is already recorded in the Bible. In Revelations it says that there was no longer the tabernacle, it was Jesus is the Holy of Holies. So within that veil, we come in to the Holy of Holies, and he is the Holy One. So holiness and purity was transmitted by the Lord directly into my heart. And it says the Holy Spirit glorifies the Son, so the fruit of the Spirit is love and peace and joy. And I was realizing that I was like an outer court standing outside that cloud where the fruit of the Holy Spirit, who glorifies the Son, but when you came in within the veil, the Holy of Holies, stood the Lord. Uh, Ian, praise God for you, and, and praise God for what he's done in well, your thank life. Thank God for a praying mother. <laughs> and the thank God for a praying mother. I've, I had one, and <laughs> I had a praying father, too, and they turned me around with their <laughs> prayers. That can happen. You know, for you, if you've heard this story and you're wondering, uh, can all this be real, uh, pray Ian's prayer. God, if you're there, if you're real, could you show me? Could you, could you do that for me too? Um, you know, faith is, is a whole lot stronger when you've got this kind of evidence for it. You know, it's the evidence of things not seen. So uh, God wants to give you evidence and just realize the promises for you that if you love him, he will manifest himself to you. That's the promise from the Gospel of John. Ian, God bless you. God bless you. Right. <laughs> we'll be back with more of the 700 Club right after this.